Ezekiel 38 tells us about Gog, which is a title presumably of the leader of Russia with a conglomerate of nations that will attack Israel. Israel won't be able to do anything about it, neither will the rest of the international community, but God himself will intervene and destroy all of those nations. What does any of this have to do with Vladimir Zelensky? Watch this video and find out. It's gonna blow your mind. All right, folks, let's get into this one. We have said it again and again and again and again that when you look at geopolitics around the world, the most important thing to do is put it in light of God's word. God's word has to be the tool that gives us insight as into how we look at things. Now, when the whole thing with Ukraine erupted and what took place with Russia was happening, we made some things very clear. The first thing we made clear was that Zelensky was a corrupt man. We know that. We're going to talk about that in just a second. The videos you're going to watch of Zelensky are going to make a great case for how absolutely corrupt he is. But let's stop for a second to really talk about the bigger issue, and that is we come to our conclusions with respect to geopolitics anywhere in the world in light of what the Bible tells us. And when it has something to do with the narrative of Bible prophecy, we should be able to stand firm with great confidence about the assertions that we're making because they are founded in the word of God. Now, when we read Ezekiel chapter 36 and 37, for example, it tells us that God will bring Israel or the Jews back into their ancestral homeland in unbelief. We've been watching that happening. We're actually watching the beginning of that fulfillment taking place, and it's nothing that should surprise us. We've been saying that it would happen. We've been watching it happen, and that's the reason why we have incredible confidence in saying that there is no such thing as a spiritual Jewish population that replaces those who are physical Jews, right? We talk about this. We talk about the end time scenario that it's constantly given to us in the scripture. We talk about all of those things. So when we get into the study of Ezekiel 38, we know that there is going to be a group of people, a conglomerate of nations that are going to come against Israel. We have talked about this time and time and time again. We've also said that this group of people that come against Israel will be undefeatable even by Israel. And the only way that they will be defeated, and make no mistake about it, they will be defeated, is by God himself intervening in the matter and actually acting on behalf of Israel and destroying them. So when we talk about what's happening in Ukraine, that particular narrative is very important to understand because when you look at it in light of God's word, you can come to some very confident assertions. Why? Because we read about Gog, which Gog is a title of the leader, presumably of Russia, who will lead a conglomerate of nations to attack Israel and the whole world will do nothing about it. As a matter of fact, there will be people that will dissent against the attack and will actually say that this is wrong, like Saudi Arabia, for example. Surprise, surprise, by the way, that we're looking at all this normalization happening, even with everything that's happening in Gaza. But what's interesting is they will not do anything militaristically speaking. So there's no way in the world that Ukraine prevails against Russia. It isn't happening. It's not in the books. It's not going to take place, and the United States of America is wasting an inordinate amount of money, time, energy, and effort by investing in Ukraine because it is a losing cause. What is terribly sad about all of this is not only is it a losing cause, but it's also investing in one of the most corrupt leaders that we have around the world. Zelensky is not a good guy. He has jailed political opponents. He has killed priests. Yes, priests, folks. He has killed Christians in his own country, and he continues to do things that literally suffocate out any opposition to his leadership in order to effect change. As a matter of fact, let me go so far as to say that he desires no peace because so long as he can be a warmonger and so long as he can launch a war against Russia— he puts himself in a position of power that nobody can seem to dispute. And now we bring ourselves to a story that is in the hill that basically tells us 
the very thing that we've been talking about. And the title of the story is Zelensky says it's not the right time for elections in Ukraine. Yes, folks, that's exactly what the man is saying here. And it is absolutely insane, literally insane. Let me read this to you. It says Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said in a Monday address that it is not the right time for elections in Ukraine as the end of his five-year term approaches. Zelensky argued in his Monday video address that Ukraine should not have to deal with elections as it continues to attempt to fend off Russia, which invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. He previously had not ruled out Ukraine holding a presidential contest next year, though elections are currently suspended in the country under martial law. It's amazing. And folks, I'm going to show you this video and it is going to absolutely make you sick. Okay. Let me read a portion of this article that goes on to say presidential elections in Ukraine are scheduled to take place every five years. The next one is slated for next March. Zelensky was sworn into office in May of 2019, meaning that his five-year term is set to expire in a few months. Ukrainian First Lady Olena Zelensky said in September that she did not know whether her husband would run for re-election in 2024. She also said at the time that the country's ability to organize a free and fair election could factor into whether he would run again for a second term. Folks, this is unbelievable. Let me show you the video that everybody is talking about. He is speaking, of course, in Russian. So we do have subtitles for you to be able to better understand what he's saying. And then I'm going to close this home by bringing you or bringing to your attention another video that Zelensky made. It was part of an interview that's going to prove my point. Folks, let me just simply say this. He doesn't want to end the war. He does not want to end the war because if he ends the war, he ends his rule. He ends the money flow that's going in his pocket. He ends the lifestyle that he's living and he ends the power and influence that he has. Folks, I'm telling you, this is about as real as it gets. Let me play this video. Hopefully this is gonna make a little bit of sense to you. After I play this video, I've got another one to play for you and it's gonna drive home the point. So here it is. This is Zelensky talking. You'll have to pay attention to the subtitles if you don't understand Russian. Here it is. We повинні визначитись, що зараз Час оборони, час битви, від якої залежить доля держави і людей, а не час вкидів, яких від України очікує лише Росія. Я вважаю, що зараз вибори не на часі. І якщо потрібно поставити крапку у тій чи іншій політичній суперечці і далі працювати лише у єдності, то в державі є структури, які здатні ставити крапки і давати суспільству всі необхідні відповіді. Щоб не залишилось простору для конфліктів та чужої гри проти України. Моє особисте ставлення і заклик, так само, як і 24 лютого, дбати про нашу державу, про її захист, про знищення окупанта, про волю України, яка здобувається зараз в боях заради України. Я дякую всім, хто допомагає, слава усім, хто воює і працює заради України. Слава Україні! Glory to Ukraine. You know, it's funny when I think about this man, he does not wish glory to Ukraine. He wishes destruction to Ukraine. Let me just simply say this. I won't even go so far as to say that. I will just say that he is willing to make money off the death of the future. Let me say that one more time. The man is willing to make money off the death of the future. It is terribly sad. It is un believably wicked and it is demonic make no mistake about it folks this is crazy this by the way is the reason why we pay very careful attention to what the bible says about the region and by the way the consequentiality of the united states of america here is so diminished that it's not going to have the power to intervene there's a video out there you guys have probably seen it where former president trump actually says he can fix the problem with Russia and Ukraine in 24 hours. He can end the war, okay? He was very clear about that, very sincere about it. I actually believe that he can actually do it. Understand what happens here. Zelensky is not a dummy. Zelensky is smart. 
He knows what he's doing, and he knows that Trump in no way in a million years would go to Ukraine to get involved in this because of the obvious conflict of interest that it would create. But he still invites the president to come and to fix the problem, fully knowing that it's incapable of being fixed. And as a matter of fact, making a declaration when he makes the open invitation that it can't be fixed and that it's impossible with the smirk on his face. Why? Because he doesn't want it to be fixed and he won't allow it to be fixed because he doesn't care. He cares about his own pocket. But look at what he says here. This is very, very interesting. Pay attention. Former President Trump said that about 24 hours that he can manage it and finish the war. For me, uh, what can I say? So he's very welcome, first of all. President Biden was here and he, I think he understood some details which you can understand only being here. So I invite President Trump, if he can come here, I will need 24 minutes. Yes, 24 minutes, not more. Yes, not more, 24 minutes to explain President Trump that he can't manage this war. He says, Trump says he can fix it in 24 hours, but all I need is 24 minutes to tell President Trump he can't do this. Why? Because it'll take him about 24 minutes to tell President Trump that he's not willing to cooperate with Putin in order to end this. Folks, that's exactly the name of the game here. By the way, the former president understands that principle, but let's continue on with what our friend Zelensky continues to say. He can't bring peace because of the Putin if, but always we have if, if he's not trying and if he's not ready to give our territory uh, for this terrible man, for, 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 for the Putin. If you are not ready to give it, if you are not ready to give our independence, he, 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 can't, he can't manage it. <laughs> I might be a little simple-minded about this because understand there are some remarkable complexities associated with the region and things that relate to the history, especially when we talk about American clandestine operations that are taking place in Ukraine and the complexities that are oftentimes associated with how America involves itself specifically with the interests that are sort of laid up in there. But I do want to say this. I want to say that there is a no way in the world that this man wants to end this war right now, especially based on his actions and especially based on the opportunities put in front of him. If you stop to reflect upon it, this war didn't even have to start. I am not defending Putin and I refuse to defend the actions of a man who did what he did. But what I am saying is, this could have been prevented and it can still be put to an end, but it's not going to because he's not willing to. Now, I will tell you how this game is going to end. If he does not want to give up this fight, it's going to get taken from him and it's not going to be a good situation and Russia will prevail because that's exactly what we know is going to happen in the last scenario because we can't get to Ezekiel 38 unless all of this stuff is taken care of. And folks, I'm telling you right now, if I have to bet against the word of a man or the potential geopolitical strategies that man is building to try to get through this, or I have to bet against the Bible, I am betting against man every single time. I am going to choose to side with what the scriptures tell me because what the Bible tells me is true. Folks, things are changing. The world is rapidly changing. And I can tell you this. Christ could come at any moment because all the things that are necessary for this battle to take place and this theater to open up for all of this to happen is right there. So it's time to wake up and recognize what's happening, folks. There it is. By the way, one last thing. The report that we just read is a mainstream media report. It's a liberal media report, and they are all conceding to the same issue. This is not something that is hiding. This is not something that is sort of in the, uh, in the background that's kind of being put on the back burner. That is not happening here. It is not happening. And folks, it is time to wake 
up. It is time to wake up. Even with these new uh, NASAM systems that have come into play, right, that are in service in Ukraine, it's not making a difference, right? Those are the National Advanced Surface to Air Missiles. It's not doing anything about it, right? Folks, we have to wake up. We have to recognize what this is all about. It's a big issue, a much bigger issue. Whether or not Lithuania helps, whether or not other nations help, it's not going to end well. It isn't because the Bible tells us how it's going to end. We've got to open up our eyes. All right. God bless you guys.